Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very interesting uh, little much-anticipated knife right here. This is the Spyderco Reinhold Rhino. Um, very, very interesting piece, but actually first off in the name of full disclosure, someplace over here I have a sheet of paper that will express to you that this knife was sent to me by Spyderco. There we go, here's that piece of paper. This was the, uh, sent to me directly from Spyderco. As always, I've told them that I was going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly of whatever's on my table. Might be a gem, it might be junk and they still sent it along. But nonetheless, um, we have to assume this one was well quality controlled and uh, also that uh, I've done my best not to uh, let this affect my review too much. But anyways, there you go. Next thing, size comparison. This is not a very large knife here whatsoever. Here it is against a uh, Spyderco Dragonfly which is a knife that has, legally speaking, the same blade length, but is actually, uh, the, 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 the sharpened edge is a little bit less than the Rhino here. Uh, here it is against the Spydeco Delica, because, you know, tradition's sake, here we go. Um, here it is against the Ontario Rat number two, and so you can see this is definitely smaller than the two, and uh, also smaller than the Rat one here. So, um, there you go. Uh, next thing, uh, so I think that'll do it for size comparison. Yeah, that'll do it for now. The next thing, um, this guy actually has a relatively long story. This is a knife that uh, has had a, a fraught existence, so to speak. Um, this guy started off uh, being made by the uh, Spyderco Taiwan plant. Uh, not Tai Chung, but Taiwan. Um, but apparently, for whatever reason, I, and I'm not privy to details, obviously, but... Um, they decided that wasn't going so swinging, and so they ended up moving this model to Tai Chung. Um, this knife became a Tai Chung made knife, and uh, it got a lot more expensive in the process, but it also got, I imagine, much better made. The Taiwan factory is eh, not so stellar. So, um, anyways, this guy took a long time to get to market. I mean, Spyderco very often takes a long time to bring announcements onto the scene, but uh, this guy took an extra long time, and that's not something I'm super in love with, but that's the story here, and it is a long story, and I'm grateful to finally be able to chance, uh, be able to chance, wow, long week, guys, um, be able to get a chance to check this guy out. So let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly, and we will be able to get a chance to have a final conclusion here. Um, so uh, on the good side, first off, the blade is nice in many ways. It's a nice full flat grind. It has, uh, the, the steel on it is uh, CTS XHP over here. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. XHP is a solid steel, good to go. Um, it cuts quite well because of this full flat grind and because of the fact that the blade stock is actually not all that thick. If we uh, hold it up here next to the Spyderco Delica, yeah, it's a little bit thicker, but it's a, a nice tall grind. They've done a really nice job actually making this knife cut, and that's that's great. Next thing, ergonomically speaking, this is doing pretty good. Um, is It's not perfect necessarily, and you can definitely feel a bit of a hot spot off the clip, but all told, this is definitely a knife, and Spyderco will do this pretty regularly, where you get a, a relatively uh, long uh, handle for a relatively short blade. The blade-to-handle ratio is not incredible, but what that does mean is that even if you don't have little tiny hands like myself, um, you are absolutely going to be able to wield this guy effectively, although this isn't really a knife that's super like uh, I would wield this. Um, also fine in a reverse grip, I guess, for some reason. But anyways, um, there you go. So that's, uh, that's nice. The ergonomics on this guy, although there are some hot spots, are actually a lot better than you would expect for a relatively small knife with no finger choil or anything like that. Next thing, this is a Taiwan made knife, and as such, the uh, Tai Chung made knife, that is, and as such, the build quality is just good. Um, no freaking problems. It's running on phosphor bronze washers which is excellent. Um, the Taiwan factory tends to go Teflon, and hey, hey, hey. Um, but that's good. Um, and overall, it's it's beautifully scented. It's it's smooth. It's put together well. This is a really high-end knife. I mean, it, well, at least it feels like a pretty high-end one in terms of its overall construction. That's nice. The uh, disassembly on this, guys, you saw was actually pretty easy. Um, all, all told, it's a straightforward knife to take apart. And because of the, um, the, the, the phosphor bronze in there, it should be robust over time. No concerns there. Next thing, um, I, I have to say, this is not about the knife at all, but it's something that uh, does bring me a little bit of joy. Look, um, when this was originally announced, and was originally announced at Taiwan, I was a little skeptical, I'll admit, because I'd had some, you know, knives from there that weren't that impressive. Um, but then, when Spyderco just, like, pulled the model outright, said, you know what, we're not going to be able to release this for a while, it's not going well, so we're going to do this right, that actually brought me a lot of joy. Um, and the reason being that I, that's a, decision I don't know that some companies would have made. Um, there, there seems to be a very strong impetus in a lot of places just to ship it. You know, get it out there. If it's, if it's better, we'll make a better version down the road. But they actually just stopped. They said, wait, this isn't going so well. Let's do something different. And then they did, they, they did something different. And you know what? I respect the heck out of that. I'm sure it was a really expensive decision. And I definitely know that they took some flack, especially first announcing this as a budget folder. 
and then releasing it later as something that's a, a higher end Tai Chung piece, they, they've taken some flack for that, but I really do respect it. I think if you're going to do something, do it right. And if it's not your best work, if it's not good work, then don't do it. Um, you know, do, do, do your damnedest. So um, I like that they did that. And finally, this is a very lightweight knife here. Um, it's not like, oh my God, incredible lightweight, just because there are full steel liners to either side, but it, it is very light in the pocket. It's very small. It's 2.26 ounces. I mean, that's, that's very lightweight, and the, the, the way that the weight is distributed makes this guy feel pretty good in the pocket. And, uh, you know, with the clip here, which is ambidextrous, by the way, it carries well. This is just really nice in that domain. And so, to me, all of that is the good, is it's lightweight. Um, They did take the time to do it right, even when I know it cost them a little bit of uh, face, if you will, uh, in the community. They, um, the disassembly is easy. The construction is pretty robust here. Very good build quality, nice ergonomics, and a good blade that cuts well. To me, what's great about this guy is actually the size. Look, there were a lot of knives out there in the world. Um, there are even more knives out there in the world above two and a half inches, but this guy is coming in, no matter how you want to measure it, this guy is coming in under two and a half inches. That makes it legal in places like Boston or Cleveland or Chicago. I believe Chicago is two and a half. But either way, um, it makes it legal in a bunch of places that this wouldn't have otherwise been. But more importantly, it makes kind of a weird design legal in a place that a bunch of places wouldn't have been. It's very often the case that when companies make a legal knife, and Spyderco is kind of a notable, ex uh, notable exception to this, when they're making a knife that's super short, they're doing their best to do something pretty vanilla. They're doing, like, this is just going to be a, a quick tool. And look, I'm all in favor of making functional tools, but you know what? I love the fact that they made something with a lot of character, and this knife absolutely has character that is willing to come in under those kinds of size lines. It still provides some style. It provides something weird, unusual, etc. Spyderco is one of the rare companies, um, frankly, it's pretty awesome that... It, no matter who you're buying from, people living in these kinds of cities have a, a good selection of knives that are coming in under that and that have, you know, different characteristics, have different... And so I love the fact that they made something that is weird, but it's also very legal in these areas. And uh, so, to me at least, that's what's great going on here is that it's a very nice size for people living in those areas and it's got a lot of style for that size. Um, on the bad side, the price is absolutely higher than uh, it was going to be otherwise. It's 129 bucks. Look, um, the steel is XHP. That's a fine steel. The, the construction here is this carbon fiber G10 laminate thing. Um, you know, it's not that far off from like the Little Native, which is made in the States. Actually, it's a little bit above the Little Native. A little bit, I guess. But um, still, the price is definitely, it's a little bit up there, and you can definitely get better value elsewhere in the Spyderco lineup than this guy. Um, next thing, the upswept tip on this guy, I'm going to be honest, those don't do it for me in general, but it does it for me even less here. Just because it's a very, very small knife, and upswept tips, to me at least, uh, I don't know, perceptually, have a sort of air of, ah, uh, swagger? That's a weird thing to say, guys. It's been a long week. But still, I'm not a big fan of that upswept tip. It's not doing it for me here whatever uh, whatsoever. It's like, this is not a Persian freaking say. But why am I why am I the, 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 the up sweeping this guy here? Whatever, not a huge deal. Next thing, one thing that is going to be a huge deal for about ten percent of the population is this little ridge right here. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of it aesthetically speaking. I can totally get why ergonomically it kind of makes sense. Although anytime you define a finger groove like this, it's gonna well, it can cause you some trouble. But um, the fact is that this makes this knife profoundly lefty unfriendly. Having this little piece right here makes this guy pretty much untenable for a lefty. You cannot get, maybe you can get your thumb in there if you really try, and maybe this is just the, the, the place to put the clip or something like that. I don't know exactly what's going on here, but I don't like this piece because it makes a knife that's ambidextrous in the pocket, and compression locks are generally pretty lefty friendly, but it makes it uh, basically not a lefty compatible knife at all, and I don't quite get why. Maybe there's a good reason for it, and if you happen to be the designer, uh, please let me know in the comments why, but it doesn't do it for me aesthetically went open, and it doesn't do it for me from the lefty perspective, because that's a near miss right there. Next thing, um, this is just crying out for the Spyderco wire clip. I'm a big, big fan of the wire clip on the Spydercos. I think it, it's a great little innovation here. It would have, I think, ridden a little bit better on this guy, and I know they do wire clips at the Taichung plant. I don't know why this ended up with a spoon clip whether, rather than the wire clip. It doesn't really, I don't know. I feel like that would have been a better choice on this guy, and both aesthetically speaking and uh, just overall, I think it, it just would have matched better. It's not a big fan of that. Next thing, and this one is something that kind of bothers me, but it's not as scary as I think it, as I kind of suspected it was going to be. I'm take a look right in here. If I zoom in a little bit, what you can see is a little tiny bit of sharpened blade right in there. But the thing is, look, the geometry here is well done, that even with relatively small fingers compared to most, 
I actually can't quite touch that blade. It's there, it's creepy, it scares me, but every time my fingers get close to that, I'm either hitting the top surface here, I'm hitting this surface here, I'm hitting this surface here. Look, uh, I, you, you're playing with fire here, Spyderco, but at the same time, it's not something that's dangerous, it's just something that's creepy. And so I'm, I'm not a big fan of it, but it's not the, the end of any worlds. Something that bothers me more than that is the fact that, you know, a lot of compression lock knives, for instance, here's the Spyderco Shaman. Whoa, zoomed in a little there. Um, here's the Spyderco Shaman. Great knife, one of my very favorites, and a nice example of what the compression lock can bring to the table, because watch this. If I disengage the compression lock, the blade basically just starts to fall. Um, and so I can basically use the compression lock itself to shut the knife. I pull the lock back, give the blade a little, and, and there you go. Case closed, problem solved. Unfortunately, though, this guy is a very light blade, and it's running on phosphor bronze washes, uh, which means that basically this is not going to do that. And in fact, even with a bit of a flick, I can't get this blade to come out of the, the, that basic position. And so, unfortunately, closing this guy one-handed is not straightforward. I can kind of do it by, like, using my middle finger to disengage the compression lock, using my index finger to push the blade a little bit of the way, and then using the index finger to pull it down the... But that's just not a great solution. And honestly, that makes this guy less compelling. Here's the Caribbean, uh, Caribbean, another of the, uh, the, the, the Spyderco uh, compression lock knives. And again, you can do that kind of flippy, shoddy thing. Here, in this case, um, you know... It, it takes a little bit of oomph at the first here because it's a pretty new knife, but still, I, I'm not a big fan of that, and honestly, I feel like that gives up one of the main advantages of the compression lock is the ability to close the blade without your fingers being in the slicing path. You can do it, just not great. So, um, to me at least, that, that makes this a less compelling compression lock, and that is a part of the bad, uh, which uh, the, the fact that the cop lock doesn't work as well here, it is kind of a two-handy closed knife, and at the very least, it's very fine motory to close. Um, there is this little bit of exposed blade, which is more creepy than dangerous. It is just crying out for a wire clip. It is lefty unfriendly. The upswept tip just seems a little bit weird on a knife of this size, and the price is a little bit up there, but it's not so out of line that I'm super concerned. Um, one thing that is a little bit more out of line is this little guy right here. Spyderco has been doing this lately. They started off this on the, uh, the, the shaman here, which we can see, but where you get this little blade guard down at the bottom here, that's a good idea, but then that blade guard comes into the compression lock area and hits your finger. Um, that's a little bit frustrating if you do one of these kinds of things because it's going to prevent the blade from cleanly closing but in this case it's sort of just a pain in the neck um because if you're trying to close it with your thumb it just like it doesn't work super well and i get that here it's probably protecting that blade chunk more than anything but honestly that's that's not doing it for me, and I kind of hope that this is just like something that Spyderco is going to figure out a way around it for future designs. Uh, is that no? So, um, to me, that's what's ugly is this little finger pecker here coming in the blade in the compression guard. <laughs> compression guard. Wow, the finger pecking blade guard coming into the compression lock area. There we freaking go. Um, final conclusions on this guy. Look, this is a knife that I think is well done in a lot of ways. I mean, it's nicely made, absolutely 100%. It's a unique design for people with smaller knife tastes or smaller knife laws. It's a good, you know, the materials on it are good. It's it's made well overall, and you know what? It is a great little blade for cutting. Absolutely. I mean, you can see here there's definitely... I gave this guy its, its due, and it, it cuts nicely. Um, And so I, there, there's a lot to love about this guy, but I also find it pretty unsatisfying in a couple of ways. I don't personally love the upswept tip, but that's that's a matter of taste there. But the two-hand closed thing, I think, is maybe less a matter of taste. In fact, I've heard some other folks say, you know, that that, that really bugs them about it. Um, and the fact that the, uh, the the blade guard here is coming in there, that's just a little bit disappointing. And so those things make this maybe a little less compelling than I'd hoped it was going to be. The biggest issue, though, that I think this knife has is the competition. This guy here is coming in at $45 more than the Spyderco Dragonfly in ZDP 189 steel. Now look, ZDP is a great steel, XHP is a great steel, I personally prefer the ZDP, um, but I also personally prefer the Dragonfly, and for $45 less than the, the, the Rhino here, you can get one of these guys. You get a little less functional blade length, you get a lot less attitude for sure, but you get something that's a little bit ergonomically better, that's uh, slicier, that's thinner. I, I just, I prefer this, and frankly, I like ZDP better than this guy is, so um, I would go Dragonfly ZDP any day of the week. The other option is your Little Native, um, which is 20 bucks less than the Rhino here, but it's a nicer, small compression 
compression lock. It, it works a little bit better. The blade's a little thick, absolutely, but you know what? It, it cuts well, and it also offers, I think, better ergonomics than this guy does. And so, to me, both of those options, the Little Native or the Dragonfly, or frankly, a bunch of the other stuff that Spyderco offers, if the two and a half inch law isn't hard and fast, uh, really are going to be more compelling. But on the whole, you know, it's a knife with some good, it's a knife with some bad. It, to me, it kind of balances out the way kind of situation. If you love the design, if you're digging the upswept dip, if you look at this blade and be like, oh my god, yes, then you know what? You're probably going to enjoy this guy, and the little issues are going to be overwhelmed by the uniqueness of it, by the love of that design. This is the only way you can get a Persian blade in, in your city, then you're going to freaking love this knife. But if it's not speaking to you, if the design is not calling your name, grabbing you by the short hairs, and just like, buy me, then honestly, I wouldn't buy this. I think you can do a little bit better for the size, and better for the dollar, and uh, I know that you won't be upswept away on merit alone. Huh? Huh? Anyways, I hope this has been interesting to you and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.